Shalom, shalom. This is part five. Part five. Try to finish up here to the message uh, from law, law to grace. Uh, in the Old Testament, laws were established. God spoke to Moses, to the children of Israel, um, and set laws because they kept sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning. But there's no sin if there's no law. Because how do you know it's a sin if you don't have a law to say it's a sin? So these were the Ten Commandments were placed and so on and so forth to let them know. Now, do we do away with the law? No, we establish the law, the law, the statutes, and the commandments of the Most High. All right, shalom, shalom, we establish that. However, the law was a schoolmaster until the Messiah should come. When he came, now we have forgiveness because back then for their sins, they would give bulls and goats and rams and things like that and burnt offerings. They would burn that stuff, but then they would keep sinning. You know, they would let that be their offering for sin, you know, and then they would still keep. And so Moses had a veil on his face when he would speak to the Most High. And the children of Israel were like, you speak to him, but we don't want to speak to the Most High because they knew they were in sin. But before Moses came with the tablets, and we know Moses was a Hebrew Israelite and all that stuff. Before Moses came, there was Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Abraham was given a promise. You know, even though he was up in age and Sarah was up in age, that he would be given a son, a seed. And that's through the lineage, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He wrestled with God and Jacob's name became Israel. Jacob eventually had 12 sons, which are the 12 sons of Jacob or the 12 sons of Israel or the 12 tribes of Israel. And those tribes, those they became, became families and they spread amongst the whole earth. And these are... The, the children of Israel or the Israelites. That's where that term is from in the Bible. Okay, so I'm just bringing it back. You got to go through parts one, two, three, four, and now we're at part five. But we're talking about from law to grace in these parts. Okay, so then it didn't make the seed of uh, none effect because Abraham was still promised a seed. So through all of that lineage came the Messiah. And now he is the eternal sacrifice in the, in the flesh, the eternal lamb of God. Okay, so it's not these bulls and rams and things anymore. So now that was all to bring us into the new blood, the New Testament, the, the, his blood, his blood, which had more power than those those animals blood. Okay, so that's why I had to be explained because some people don't, you know, that they don't know if it's not taught in church. How will you know? Okay, so that's what that is about. So the law, we don't do away with the law, even though every time the law is read, a veil comes over our face, the Bible says, because there were sin offerings, guilt offerings. There was all other kind of. Uh, sacrifices but the Messiah he's the one we go to we can repent ask forgiveness when we sin that don't mean we just start sinning and do away with the law no we establish the law and everything but it's the fact that the law can't die for you <laughs> I mean the law is just an ordinance it can't go and get up on the cross and take sin for you it's just saying hey it's just exposing sin so the people know okay, I can't break commandments just like men's laws can't run no traffic light and not get a ticket because the law says you get a ticket for going over such and such and such miles per hour. So the same thing with the laws of the Bible. So I try to explain it each time because you never know when someone's just now hearing one message and didn't go back and listen because a lot of times people don't start from part one. They want to jump in at any time and then I don't understand where he's coming from. You know what I mean? Maybe you should start from part one. You know what I mean? And that helps. You know what I mean? So if you don't get a chance to, I try to round it up. So that's what I want. So that's where we are now. We, uh, we ended with Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 28. Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. They, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now remember, Abraham was given a promise that through him all nations would be blessed. And that promise was the seed. It came through Isaac, through Jacob, all the way down the lineage, all down the line to Jesus Christ himself. Or Emmanuel, or Yahweh Shah, or Yahweh Ishai, Hamoshia, Yehoshua, all the names, first and last, Abraham, uh, Alpha, Omega, from everlasting, everlasting, he's the most high. So he's going to have another name we don't even know yet until we get up there. So it's all these, because there was no letter J before 1600. So everybody has all these, you know, so, but we, we went through that in the other, some other messages, but we're talking about from law to grace. So from that, from that, the law brought us up to, but we don't do away with the law. We're just saying that we're saved by grace. His grace is sufficient enough. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. So thank God he sent the eternal lamb. Because if we were sacrificing bulls and rams today, I mean, could it really do us any justice? No. But we're justified by faith. Hallelujah. 
Okay, so please go through parts one, two, three, and four, so you you know know where we kind of going with this. Okay, so we talked about that there's neither Jew nor so a lot of times people say, well, how do you know? Okay, Revelations chapter one, verse thirteen, fourteen, fifteen uh, tells you what the Messiah looked like. Okay, hair like wool, all that feet like burnt brass. He's the king of the Jews, the original Jews, the Hebrew Israelites. Israeli is not in the Bible. No hate, no discriminative thing. Just Bible facts. He has a people, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You know, we went through all the different, my, some of the my people scriptures is all over the Bible. And his people do that same lineage. Amen. So Abraham had other wives. He had Hagar. He had Ishmael. Ishmael through Hagar. The seed that wasn't the promise. The promise came through Sarah. Okay. Keturah. They had children with her. That's not the promise. So all these other religions, the promise is not through that. It's through Sarah. Okay, through the Hebrews, okay, all the way through. Thus saith the Lord, the Bible, send your Bible, the King James, okay. And King James was a Hebrew. He wasn't what people think. He was a man of color and all like that. So a lot of times things are distorted, pictures are distorted, images are distorted to keep us from the knowledge of the truth. And then it's not taught in church, just, I feel good. We gonna get some chicken at 3.30. You know, instead of coming, coming with the, you know. So anyway. Let's keep it from law to grace. So now we know the law was put in place to let us know it was sin. But we not we don't go to heaven because we highly obeyed every commandment. You know, you go you get there through your faith in, in, in the Messiah. Okay? So but we don't do away with the law. But the law was done away with through believing in Christ, not bulls and rams and goats and you know. so thank God we can be established. We can be established through that which was abolished. Okay, so let's go to Ephesians chapter two. Uh, I'm gonna try to get through this. Ephesians two verse eight. Let's just go down to there. For by grace are ye saved. Ephesians chapter two verse eight. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man see. Because see in Galatians, when we were in, Gal in Galatia in Galatians. The, 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 uh, in Galatea, the Galatians, where Paul said, Apostle Shaul said, who bewitched you? Like, who put this witchcraft on you? Because the people start thinking, I'm saved by the law because I don't break no laws. Yay! And he said, no, you saw Christ was crucified in front of you. It's through him. He's the Messiah. He's the sacrifice. It's not no bulls and rams and the laws and, and commandments and ordinances and statutes that, that just because you follow them, you're going to be saved. No, you saved by his grace. Because you still keep going back to sinning. But do we do away with the law? No. We establish it. It lets us know you sin. If there's no law, how do you? How do people know they're sinning? They won't have this. It it's no sin then. Because nothing is stating that if you break this, you're a sinner. So it's not that that's what saves us. It just gives us knowledge of our sin. What saves us is our faith and being saved, being justified by faith for the just. So live by faith, walk by faith, not by sight. And it's by grace you are saved. And that has to really be explained. So the law was in place back in the day because the Messiah wasn't here yet. To let them know, you're sinning. Stop doing those things, those adulterous things and all this kind of stuff. And they would stone you. People knew, like, you broke the laws. Everybody gathered together, that person needed to be stoned. Now, you know, even the Messiah stoned people. Fire and brimstone, Sodom and Gomorrah for their actions. Okay, he flooded out places. You know what I mean? With Noah's Ark, you know what I mean? For the sin. But now he sent the Messiah. You know what I mean? Father, you know, do him to himself. Okay, so and I explained the Trinity. The Father came in the in the flesh of the Messiah. He died for us as the sacrifice. Went on up and sent His Spirit down. You know what I mean? For those that will receive the Holy Ghost, sent the Spirit, the Comforter, the, His Spirit. He ascended, then He descended, and showed Himself alive. That hey, look, everlasting life is up there. He believed through me. You don't need bulls and rams and goats. Okay, that's the Trinity. That's the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost for all these other different religions and doctrines or whatever that don't understand it. Very simple. Like the Bible says, the simplicity of Christ, of the Messiah. We're in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 9. Not of works, so it ain't your works, lest any man should boast. Like, hey, I, I'm doing this. I ain't break no law. No, it's not that. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we shall walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, and the flesh made by hands. But see, back then you had to be circumcised and keep the whole law. 
You know what I mean? Now you're circumcised by your heart, by just the heart, you're being a believer. Okay? We in Ephesians 2, and I want you to get this. Ephesians 2, verse 12. That at the time you were without Christ. This is the Jew, Gentile, and all that stuff. There's neither Jew, there's neither Gentile, there's neither bond nor free. Because what happened was the Jews in, in Jerusalem felt like they was the most devout. And so when the Roman Empire came in, in, is, in Israel and Jerusalem, and everybody was scattered, and of course for their the things breaking laws they was scattered into egypt and that's how we wound up in the land of the north and all over the places we're not afro americans no hate but we are hebrew israelites the so-called negro you know the, the black hispanic native american indians so what happens is you know what i mean people think that, that, that they don't understand that what was happening is the devout jews was looking down on those that got scattered because they weren't in jerusalem no more so those they was just considered them gentiles or whatever so let's get it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. You know, uh, so we read that. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past, Gentiles in the flesh walk. Because, you know, Paul was sent to the Gentiles because the other apostles, he was having beef with them. They was trying to say he wasn't a, because he used to persecute the church until he got, got delivered. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 2, 12. That's where I want to hit. I read 11 already. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, aliens from the commonwealth of, commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who hath made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. See that? Broken down there. As they was considered aliens, estranged from Israel, but they were from Israel. Okay, so some people think, oh, it doesn't matter. He, he, he's not. He's for everybody. Oh, let they get it. They don't read. They don't get the understanding. And it's of no private interpretation. The Bible says, so I don't have it all. You don't have it. He don't. She don't. Nothing. Iron sharp and iron. You know what I mean? We study to show ourselves approved. Now let's get Ephesians two down to fifteen. See, the wall was broken. Petition. That's fourteen. Fifteen. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, having abolished. And he got away the enmity, the enemy, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make it himself of, of twain, one new man, so making peace. So see, so, so we follow the law, statutes and commandments, right? We don't want to break them, but it's, but that doesn't save us. The law, the statutes, the commandments, the ordinances just lets us know when we're breaking that law because it's, 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 Different commandments that let you realize, okay, I broke a commandment, I sinned. But that ain't save you until the Messiah, until he sent his son. So the people back then was giving bulls and rams and goats, as I said, to burn as a sacrifice for forgiveness. But the, but the Most High God got tired of that. Elohim, the very deity, he said, I'm tired of that. And y'all, and, and plus y'all still go back and keep sinning against me. Even though y'all my chosen people, royal priesthood, chosen generation. You know what I mean? Who was he grieved with for 40 years in the desert? You know, the children of Israel, the children of Jacob, okay, who scattered abroad. James 1, if you can, people say, that's just the Old Testament. James 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 1 tells you, scattered amongst all nations. So, he said, I'm going to send my son. And it's through him that you're going to get saved, through the grace, his grace, his mercy, that you can repent, that you can be baptized in his name, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. I explained the Trinity. I just explained it. Came down in Son and Spirit. And I have to repeat sometimes, sometimes people don't understand, you want to have mercy on them and teach them so that they would know. So they would, because he's long suffering that all will come into repentance. So Ephesians 2, and we read 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of the twain, of the two, one new man, so making peace, and made the Messiah and all that, and that he might reconcile both unto God and one body by the cross, having slain the enmity. So he put everybody, made it all one body, and that's what we call the body of Christ, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, that were close. Okay? For through him, we both have access by one spirit. You know, okay, see that spirit we're saying, the Trinity, the Comforter that came down. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, see, they would see, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone. Shalom.